Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of The Drive by Gigi. Uh, I'm here uh, with the BMW M4 Competition Convertible X-Drive. We're going to take this little beauty out for a spin. My good friend Lee has lent the car to me for, a, for an hour or so. We're going to go, go out in the country roads and uh, see what the competition badge is all about. So. Remember, please subscribe, please like, and uh, hit the bell notifications. That way you are notified of any video that I post on YouTube. Apart from that, thanks for watching. Happy Christmas, and, uh, and let's hope 2024 is going to be a good year for everybody. Thank you. Right, looking at the uh, competition M4 convertible X-Drive, uh, we'll start at the back. It's, quite a, it's actually quite a simple car. I mean, you've got, we've got a carbon pack on here, so you've got the rear diffuser which is all carbon, the wing mirrors, and carbon, very very nice, and at the front, you also have the front splitter, parts of the front splitter also have the carbon uh, packs, that looks really good, there we go, it's a carbon pack, we've got the optional laser lights, which are quite expensive to fit, but they just look so good, and uh, my friend, I went out my friend's BMW the other day and he's got them and they really do light the road up really well but the aggressive snout which I really like I, I know there's quite a lot of conflict on the web about how this new front end of the BMWs look but I, I love it I think it looks great this has got the uh, not the competition bucket seats you know the ones with the handles because they're just so difficult to get in and out of but these these are really really nicely made look great with the roof down you've got these the m4 logo which lights up uh, at night and the air warm air that comes out of these vents to heat your neck up which we'll be trying um, the inside of the actual bmw is very actually quite simple most of the functionality is housed in the digital dash um, there's your bog standard i drive functionality there and the gear lever steering wheels loaded up with buttons uh, and you've got the usual uh, light controls down there um, but overall it's actually a very very simple cabin which I think it, it's quite good it makes it much easier to sort of live with on a daily basis okay here we go getting into an M4 competition this is brand new this car it's only got 300 miles on it now and just to show you how there we go it's a huge digital dash the inside of the BMW M4 competition has been digitalized uh, you'll be pleased to know that you can physically move around the control the uh, angle of your air vents and you can open them and close them but the temperature control is all done on the dash on the digital display um, and at least it defaults to the set screen so you, you haven't got to go into multiple menus to use that you know which is great because some of the some of the ones that exist are terrible you've got to go into three or four different menu screens before you can actually change the temperature crazy the steering wheel is a nice feel it's not too thick and it's wrapped in leather with the bmw m sport or competition stitching around there you've got a nice logo there you've got carbon weave in the steering wheel here looks like you've got cruise control lane guidance and you've got different mode selection functionality horn in the middle carbon carbon paddles here with the plus and minus sign they look really aggressive actually and then your own personal settings are stored within the M1 and M2 function buttons here. That's a dash readout there, the main dash. Uh, we've got newton meters and horsepower, revs uh, to the right and miles per hour to the left. And yeah, we've got the typical light controls down here, nothing special there. Um, and then in the middle, we've got you know, normal buttons, stability control, it looks like a reversing camera, parking button, uh, start, stop. Nice, really looking, nice looking aluminium style 
gear knob. Um, really good stitching around. Love that with a nice. I don't know if you can see it. But it's got the nice embossed M logo on it. Uh, the traditional iDrive system, which is very nice. And here we've got the button for the roof mechanism. Uh, that looks like the button for the air, the hot air that goes onto your neck through the seats. And in here we have two decent sized cup holders, uh, wireless charging and a USB-A charge point, 12 volt charge point. Heated rear screen, uh, window mats at the front, so window diffuser at the front. Nice little weighted volume button here. And in the door bins, I actually quite like this because we all do quite a lot of driving. But there's a really decent size uh, bottle compartment here, so if you've got a large bottle of water, it's angled. Eh? And then you've got all the controls here for the wing mirrors, windows, the memory seats uh, there. So yeah, without digging into the the details on the on the digital dash, um, that is probably pretty much it. Uh, from inside the cabin there really isn't much else to do uh, apart from get out in this bad boy and take it for a spin and uh, see what it's see what we think so we're going to go and set the cameras up uh, we'll be back with you in a couple of moments right here we go everybody we're inside the bmw M4 competition convertible. Here we go. So to turn it on there, Lee. So we've got a foot on the brake, push the start button. Well, they're fantastic um, cameras, aren't they? Like the 360. Yeah. So we've got the 360. Hopefully the camera's catching it, but we've got the 360 camera display. So I can see exactly where I'm going. Although because I'm reversing out my drive. Gotta be a bit cautious. They're good. And then that's it. Off we go. Right, I'm just gonna move my seat a bit forward actually. So first impressions. So am I in manual mode? No, that's, that's it, that's it, being angry. Wow. <laughs> All right, so we're in full race mode. Um, and the first thing you notice is uh, this is a very angry car. The, uh, the exhaust note is pretty special. It's not like any other BMW I've been in. Crikey. I'm not even touching the accelerator and it's, <laughs> it wants to try and throw me off the road. Quite cool as well. You got the you got the revs on the right and the speedo on the left, and then in the middle you got the uh, the amount of torque that is being put through the engine. So it's a lovely. It's actually we've got a decent break in the weather actually. So we've got a roof down, and we're going to head off into the Surrey countryside, so taking some nice routes, test the chassis, the steering. Cool. Cut the stats on this car in. So we've got 510 horsepower, 650 newton meters of torque, and um, all going through an automatic box. Eight speed, is it, Lee? Yeah. Eight speed box, and uh, yeah, the, the throttle is very, very light. You put your foot on it, and you're off. There's no, no mucking about. I'm not even trying it, it's wheel spinning. <laughs> the, the massive digital dash that we've got inside is pretty good, the visibility of it is nice. We're yet to see, uh, Lee's only had this car a couple of days, so we're yet to see whether or not having sun on the display limits the use of it, but it's a pretty overcast day here in the UK, and so far I can see all the dials nice and clear. And yeah, the actual sort of look of the display looks better in real life than it does um, on the screen on the uh, internet 
so that's quite pleasing they could have rounded off the corners a little bit to make it fit in with the uh, the rest of the the sleek looks but that's pretty good steering is very direct it's quite light love the downshifts it really burbles on the downshifts doesn't it nice burble. So yeah, just as I get used to the car, um, I was doing a bit of research to see how well uh, this does against the competition, and there actually isn't that much competition. Um, BMW now only do this and the M8, I believe, in convertibles. I don't think they do an M3 uh, anymore, so there's not huge to choose from. Not that many to choose from from BMW. And Mercedes have the AMG SL, but well, that's priced like the M8. I think that's close to 150 grand. Whoa! 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 Deadly. <laughs> Man, that's quick. Bearing in mind, I've just literally a couple of weeks back stepped out of the Cayman GT4 RS so I think this is actually quite a good comparison well I'm going to shut up talking for a minute just so you can enjoy the engine noise It's firm but well damped, it's comfortable isn't it, it's not harsh, no. not harsh at all. No wind is it? No, yeah, yeah Lee's, Lee's right, there's actually no wind at all in the cabin, which I can tell you from an older M4 that I was in recently, there was much more wind in there than this one, there's none at all. I'm actually quite warm as well. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Neck colours as well, the neck yeah, there's the heated seats. I'll tell you, I'm, sh I'm shrouded in comfort. Here. I've got a heated steering wheel, got the comfort pack, heated seats, heated neck piece. Honestly, life doesn't get much better than this. So, this car list price is around £80,000 ish. £87,000. £87,000. book. But with all the options, you're close to 100000 So, that gives you an, exa an example of type of money you're paying for one of these um, insurance for somebody in their 50s is probably just over a thousand pounds a year thousand quid um, which is to be expected so road tax for 12 months is 2100 for the first year then it reduces slightly and then it's 560 a year after the, that so this is this is definitely not your bog standard M4. That's for sure. It's really aggressive. The seats look nice as well. Yeah, it's lovely. It's actually really nice. I mean, I do like bucket seats, um, but it's also nice to have a bit of comfort. And and I think that was one of the things I found a bit annoying about the GT4 RS. And I know this is a completely different car. Is it is hard to get in and out. Now it's fine if you're like in your twenties. But when you get into your 40s and beyond, it, clambering over bucket seats is uh, quite uncomfortable and normally leaves you with lots of nice bruises. I wish you do bruise easier, much easier when you're older. So, uh, yeah, having these comfort seats is uh, a nice tick if you are in your senior years for sure. Okay, let's take a bit some beans up here. Should we go talk about some of the packs then? So we've got the visibility pack, which is uh, laser lights. It is, yeah. Um, and I can tell you that those laser lights are fantastic. Not in this car, but I've seen them in the, 
3 Series and they're awesome at night, they really are good. Technology Plus Pack. Which is a driver assist professional, parking assist plus, and it has a built-in driver recorder. Uh, yeah, that's, 360. yeah, that's really nice. The reversing cameras I try and get uh, when, when Lee leaves, but you get the bird's eye view uh, and the surround view. And I, and I first saw that back in the i8, back in probably 2014. And uh, it's nice to see this fiddle down now through all the other ranges. And a lot of other manufacturers do the same technology, but it's a cool, it's so cool, especially if you're reversing into a parking space. It makes life a lot easier. Any more packs? Yeah, and then as the comfort pack, which includes the uh, heated steering wheel, the comfort access, uh, the wind deflector. Nice. Uh, and then the, the only final items then on this particular model, is it's got the 1920 M double spoke, uh, bi-colour black alloy wheels with the track tyres and the red calipers. Lovely. Uh, as well as the M carbon exterior styling and interior styling. Oh, yeah, it does look very, very mean. So this car, although this car isn't the lightest in the world, it's it's just under two two tons, so 2,000 kilograms. The M8 is 100 kilos heavier than this, uh, and is slightly quicker to 60. This is about three and a half to 60. I think the the M8 is 3.2, but you're really splitting hairs. I mean, that's nothing really. But the M8 is a good 50k on top of this without any options. Uh, what other car, Lee, were you? considering I know you were talking about a Lotus Amira but that's obviously a different completely different car to this um, what was it that sort of sold you on the four-seater convertible family life yeah, family, all, all day uh, all day every day driving all day every day driving so there we go so this has got four wheel uh, four wheel drive so it sticks to the sticks to the road we'll wake all the neighbors up So it's got the same DNA of a Subaru rally car, yeah. which is uh, always a good thing. So Lee's been lucky enough to own quite a number of different cars. And uh, one of the other things he likes about this is it's quite understated. You know, you can turn up anywhere and you're not going to get people looking at you funny or hiking prices up just because they've seen you turn up in a very expensive car, which we know it does happen. So, oh, nice, nice Porsche 9. 6.4 so yeah very understated car um, but with all the modern power technology sound certainly doesn't sound like there's any noise being piped in the cabin to me <laughs> Lee's nodding and laughing so uh, I don't think they do that on competition models that's for sure uh, it's a good bit of road coming up so we'll give it give it some welly up the hill we're just approaching uh, Newlands Corner local beauty spot. The, the entry to the South Downs, uh, which takes you all the way through, probably about 40 miles from here, you end up at the seaside. Uh, it's a lovely drive through the countryside, lots of old quaint English villages. amazed at how good the wind uh, buffeting is yeah. there's no wind at all I know we got the windows up but we've got to because of the filming gear um, but no it's the difference the windows are down yeah yeah right just gonna get around the corner yeah, I mean that is probably one third of pushing down on the acceleration pedal. You sort of slam your foot straight down, isn't it? Just do it, just stab it straight down, you'll get a little bit of wheel spin. There we go. Goes. You'll get a little bit of wheel spin. There we go. Goes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that really goes, doesn't it? Oh. 
<laughs> if we calmed it down a bit, we, the gear changes might be a little bit more sensible. Yeah, well, if you push on the M2, you get a different drive altogether. And there's an economy mode there. All right, so, so you'll, you'll notice the tone, the, the exhaust tone's gone. Oh, yeah, so there we go. We just now it's more everyday driving now. Oh, yeah, so you could ride this. Thing. Oh, the heart rate's gone down. Yeah. We've just put it it's, into the... it's still there if you push it down. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, actually, so yeah, it really tones the acceleration uh, input down and makes the exhaust quieter. So that's, that's quite a nice feeling for when you, you don't want the aggressiveness and your heart rate to be over 100. <laughs> so what, what we do, so... Let's you push that M1 again, you'll see it change on the top there. Okay, so M1. Here the revs have changed. Revs so have well. changed. We're back in crazy mode. Right. So right, what we're we going to do, we're going to turn around here and we'll give it some juice. Lovely, quaint village up there, sheer. It's nice. Though. If you like gin as well, there's a um, silent pool. Okay. Gin is made just up there. Right, we'll let these cars go. Okay, then full beans, here we go. <laughs> God, here we go. <laughs> oh, it's like having Mike Tyson under the bonnet. That's nasty. It does throw oh. you back in the seat though, doesn't it? Oh yeah, those, those gear changes are brutal, aren't they? Oh, yeah, I mean, you'd never get bored of this, would you? <laughs> no proper smiling. Yeah. Nice. Now, obviously, this isn't my car, so I'm being very, very careful. But, but even I feel confident um, handling this. You know, the steering is so good. Steering wheel's a good size, you know, it's not too chunky. Some some have complained in the past that the BMW steering wheels are just too thick, but they've actually made this one about right, I think. It's quite nice. Yeah, there's nothing. A fact you might not know, but the Brits love convertibles. I think the Brits buy more convertibles than any other country in the world. And uh, although everybody thinks it rains all the time, it might do up north. <laughs> so a lot of people love buying convertibles coming into the countryside going to a pub for a pint which I know in a lot of other countries seems a bit strange but, but not in the UK Shifts are really nice. Okay. All right, so we're in manual mode, using the paddles for the first time. Hopefully, that's coming through on the camera. <laughs> That's got a nice noise on. Yeah, it's got a good noise. We've got all the exhaust valves open, we're in manual mode. And we're all going through a little sleepy village, so we're just waiting until we get on some better roads. So when you filled this up with uh, fuel, what was the mileage? 400? Uh, no, 200. Square feet. I don't think it was 278 it said on the, on the thing. All right. like, it was 98 to get down here and it's still 213 yeah. on there. So I'm not quite convinced on that. I did come down in economy, in the efficiency mode, but still. I imagine it's about 350, I reckon. Uh, that's that's, of fuel that's pretty motor. good. Well, it does actually let you go in a fourth. Nice. Oh. The 
drink a cup of tea in there, would you? No. <laughs> the, the, my only problem with manual mode is there's so much power, you've really got to concentrate on what you're doing. Yeah, you don't need to really in second and third gear, really, do you? Yeah. I mean, fourth, fourth gear manual mode. Brakes are good. These carbon ceramics, are these just standard? No, these are standard. I didn't um, I've got the upgraded brake, um, but I've got standard brakes. I've got the uh, well, not ever, the M brakes. Yeah. yeah the the carbon ones are um, they were another they were another few thousand. Yeah. Again, I don't really do any track racing, so they're no point. Uh, really. Here we go. Running periodly or not? Have we run it in? I'm worried about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. I probably don't keep it long enough to worry about that. <laughs> 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 I've never had a car more than six months. <laughs> I like this one though. I think I like this. So comfortable. You've got everything. You've got the comfort, the power, fresh air. I'm actually going to have to take this out off to enjoy some of the fresh air. Whew. If you like it, convertible. Yeah, like it's a, you get the fifth element, don't you? You get like the sounds and. It's nice hearing the wind, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a nice. You, you don't get massive the wind, though, do you? I mean, no. you still on a similar conversation. You're not sure oh, easily. Oh, yeah. Not, you're not, um, you don't notice the roof down at all. My wife was dead impressed with the. Because um, her hair doesn't get blown anyway. She always worries about having the roof down. You know, it's going to be a, <laughs> yeah. But, but obviously, no. you, you, you don't feel any draft really. Uh, we haven't got that problem. No. Well, it's, it's, considering I've just turned up and got in this car, it's dead easy to drive. It really is, isn't it? You know, it's not. It's, it's not very user for the technology yeah. enables you to drive constantly, doesn't it? Yeah. And I would class myself as an average Joe. Never really owned any expensive cars. Yeah, so it's nice to be able to jump in and use the full power. It'd be hard not to drive this like a hooligan every time you got in it, wouldn't it? Oh, but yeah, I, I struggle a lot to. Yeah. And I have to tell you, these roads are, around here are terrible. They really are bumpy and there's potholes. And uh, no, this is re really soaked up the bumps really well. Presumably you're in the full hard suspension mode as well. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's done a good job. It's the wheel. Yeah. I mean, I we have to learn to play around with yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome screen though. It's, it's huge, isn't it? Wow. Can you watch Netflix on it? Uh, no, you can buy an app to do that though. Oh, that's awesome, isn't it? nicely built though, but it does feel like a quality car, they don't, oh, yeah. they don't really cut too many corners, the no. materials they've used is all quite nice. No, I mean it's rock solid, I mean everyone goes on about convertibles not being as solid as, you know, a solid roof. You'd never know it, it's perfect, isn't it? you'd never know this hasn't got a solid roof on it. The old telltale sign used to be that you could look in the rear view mirror and the back of the car would be doing something different to the front of the car. <laughs> you could see the mirror moving around a bit, but none that's, of that going that's on why here. these cars are heavy though, isn't it? Because they've um, had to put extra braces on the chassis. Yeah. Just to stiffen the body. Yeah.
can't see much, but you know it's a big, serious lump, isn't it? 